Happy Friday, Moz fans. I'm here today to share with you some uh, quick stats, four quick stats about Google's search generative experiences. So in case you've not, uh, you've not heard of those before or not seen these before, this is a new kind of search result, a new kind of SERP feature, I suppose, that Google started testing uh, earlier this year. Currently, this is not generally rolled out. You can only see this if you're opted in in Google Labs, you're logged in, you're using Chrome, and you have a US IP address, although VPNs do work. So this is maybe a bit of a hint about a direction that Google might be considering. Maybe not. I might publish some, some blog posts about whether I think they'll stick to this plan. But I still think it's interesting to take a look at what they're doing right now and yeah, see what we can observe. So the basic structure of the SGE is it's just it's stuck onto the top of a search engine results page above all of the other kinds of results and SERP features. And you've got a little warning. So you know, generative AI is experimental, then a block of, of content, normally text, then some, some questions. So uh, ask a follow up and then some suggested questions. So for example, I've searched for MozCon. One of the suggested questions is where is MozCon? And this would just link through to a follow up search. Uh, and then there's these three links on the right. And these look kind of like portrait organic results, but they're actually supposed to be the articles that this ge AI generated text is, is based on. So what are the stats that I want to, to share with you? Well, these three links, I think it's very interesting. You might, you might reasonably assume that this would just be like the top three organic results or something like that. But actually, that's, that's not the case. So in only 13% of cases in the, uh, in the 100 SGE SERPs that I studied, in only 13% of cases did, were all three of these links actually present in the top 10 organic. I should say a bit about the data that I'm, I'm using here. So this is the top few keywords from every MozCast, uh, every MozCast vertical. So it's 100 SERPs in total tracked, uh, tracked in, the, in the US on desktop. So a relatively small scale study, but enough to get an idea of, of what's going on here. So yeah, 13% uh, of, of SGE SERPs had 100% overlap between these three links then also appearing in, in organic beneath, which I think is surprisingly low. Uh, and in 41% of cases, there was no overlap at all. Was it none of these links actually appeared in the, in the organic results, which, I, I, yeah, I find that very surprising. It shows that this is a different system. This is not built on top of organic. The second stat I want to, to share with you is about ads. So you'll notice I've not put any ads above the uh, the, SGE here, and that's not an accident. I, I didn't see that even once. Ads, when they exist, are beneath the SGE, so pushed right down. And in only 30% of the SERPs I, I looked at, was there, were there any ads at all? Which I would say is quite low when you're looking at sort of competitive head terms, which MozCast keywords are. But also think about how far, how far down they've been pushed. So this is not a particularly commercially great situation for Google if they were to go with this as it is. The third stat I want to share with you is about these questions. So you've got, like I say, ask a follow up and then some suggested questions here. Now, this, these look a bit like uh, people also ask questions. And indeed, often the questions that you see here will also appear in a people also ask box further down. I think that's a bit odd. I think. It's very un-Google-like to have duplicated functionality like this. You've got two SERP features that are essentially doing the same thing. You've got both people also ask box somewhere further down, and then these questions, often even with the same questions. So in 83% of SGE SERPs also had people also ask as a SERP feature, which like I say, I think that's, that makes me think they kind of rushed this. You know, if they had thought about this a little bit more, maybe they would have changed the SERPs uh, beneath to not include features that are uh, that are overlapping. I've got some, some other stats on this that I'll, I'll share later on, but this also happens with, uh, with maps. So if, if there are maps in this, in this block, then there's normally, or often I should say, also a local pack further down, which is basically the same functionality appearing 
twice. It's not, not really very elegant as these things go. And that brings me to the last stat I, I want to share, which is about what you actually have in the, the SGE. So in 70% in of cases, this is just raw text. So just like a featured snippet, uh, except obviously AI generated. The next most common is, is places, so you know, location listings. And when that happens, it's a bit odd because these three links tend to just be links to the, uh, the Google Maps results or Google local results that are also listed on the, on the map. So again, it, it kind of comes over as a little bit clumsy. Then 7% of cases you can get products inside here. I did not see, uh, when they first demoed this at Google I.O., they had ads inside the AI generated uh, block. I have never seen that in the, in the wild. I'm not sure they actually have that functionality. It was probably just a mock-up or, or something like this, but maybe a statement of intent. So yeah, that's four quick stats about, uh, about SGEs. The main thing that I would take away, to be honest, from, from my experience collecting this data is that at the moment, this is a bit of a half-baked feature. So they probably put it out in a rush to, you know, to respond to pressure from competitors and from investors. I imagine this has a long way to go. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you found these uh, stats interesting. Thanks.